from the name to watch a major at Kennesaw State University, and this paper's feature presentation will focus on Guy Hockenheim's Your Life, Work, and Death as an Academic, Activist, Filmmaker, and Raging Homo. It is my intent to show that Hockenheim's importance to the genesis of queer theory is very often overlooked in favor of the work of Michel Foucault, as well as briefly outline Hockenheim's life as an instance of revolutionary practice. Born to a bourgeois family in the southern suburbs of Paris, France, on December 3, 1946, in the House of Sagittarius, Guy Hockenheim attended the prestigious Edifice Lycée Lacanal, which sports many famous alumni. At the age of 15, Hockenheim began an affair with his philosophy professor, René Ferrer, who is believed to have fostered Hockenheim's interest in philosophy. The two remained friends until the end of Hockenheim's life. While attending the Ecole Le Marche de Rieu in Paris in 1968, Hockenheim became very active in the May Day student life. Hockenheim, because of the riots, became heavily affiliated with the French Communist Party. However, after being kicked out due to non-heterosexuality, Hockenheim became disillusioned with the heavy-handed Stalinist nature of the aforementioned party and became a Trotskyist, and then, shortly thereafter, a Maoist. Mock and uh, Hockenheim, excuse me, following the typical political itinerary of most dictators, was one of the first gay cisgender men to join the Front Homosexuel Action Revolutionnaire, which was started by lesbian cisgender women as a reaction to the French homophile movement, which was criticized for being a hotbed of bourgeois homosexuality and internalized sexism. After the founding of the FHAR, Hockenheim was already a very prominent mem member of Vive la Révolutionnaire, or VLR. In April of 1971, Hockenheim proposed that the VLR's newspaper, Peep, publish a series of articles entitled Our Bodies Do Belong to Us, The Right to Homosexuality and Every Sort of Sexuality, The Right of Minors to Freedom of Desire and Its Satisfaction, and let's stop cowering in the corner. After the special issue of Peep, the French government, the gov French government raided the newspaper's offices and indicted the famed existentialist philosopher Jean-Claude Sartre, who had spent, who had lent his name to the newspaper as editorial director. In the end, Sartre, the FHAR, and the VLR won in court. In 1979, Hockenheim got together with filmmaker Lionel Foucault produced the documentary film Rastus, the last words of the title being a play on the French word for faggot, which is hairy. The film detailed the past of non-heterosexuality. The film premiered at the Roxy Cinema in San Francisco in April of 1980 as The Homosexual Century, but the film, much like the rest of Hockenheim's work, is virtually unknown in America. Moving into Hockenheim after Hockenheim's academic endeavors. He published in 1972 the first of three proto-queer theoretical texts, Homosexual Desire, four years before Michel Foucault's famed Histoire de la Sexualité. However, because Hockenheim was deeply concerned with French politics and never came to America unlike Foucault, Homosexual Desire was untranslated until 1978. It remains fairly obscure and is unrecognized in the Peep theory canon. The other two of Hockenheim's queer theoretical texts, La Prenne de Femme, a reference to a poem by Stéphane Mallarmé, and La Terrible Homosexuelle in English, The Homosexual Bliss, these works have yet to be translated into English, but they continue along the same lines in the footsteps of Hockenheim's mentors, Deleuze and Guattari, critique of Freudian and Lacanian models of the psyche and sexual desire, an analysis of the relationship between capitalism and various sexualities in the Marxist fashion. Hockenheim's most controversial work, The Frugal Asses, was published anonymously in Guattari's newspaper, Recherche, and the 1972 issue of Non-Heterosexuality, which was later seized and destroyed by the French government. The text itself is is too magnificent to possibly describe, and with that, I show you the beginning of the twelfth and final chapter of the frugal asses. Alone in his forest dwelling, an ogre had spent years giving machines to tortured children to make love to one another, machines which 
pulleys, chains, clocks, collars, leather leggings, metal breastplates, oscillatory, pendular, or rotating dildos. One day, some adolescents who had lost their way, seven or eight of them, entered the ogre's house. No one knows if the trap closed in upon them or if the boy's curiosity was such that they closed in themselves. In any case, embedded into one another, two by two, and condemned to ejaculate until the end of time, stood the chains and the chimney of a factory without electricity and the corpse of a slave. For they did not know the ogre was dead in his attic. Unfortunately, as with most of non-heterosexual people are talking about in today, Guy was, after seeing their help slowly fall apart into their eyes, Guy, a quiet immune deficiency syndrome related illnesses. On the 28th of August, 1988, six years after the CDC finally named him, Hockenheim's untimely death illustrates what the heterosexual British writers have done for us. They have invented the notion of homosexuality and made it into the ghetto where they would let us die. Hockenheim, page 16 of the Pluto Atlas. Thank you for enjoying us for whatever we did. Also, I apologize for my voice. I've been sick for the last week and my dog's snoring in the background.